At the gallop! Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier. The saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire. And the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Bales of flour. Destroyed? Yes, sir. By weevils. Weevils. At least it wasn't mice this time, Mr. Seibert. No, sir. Well, here you are, Lieutenant. <laughs> Fill out the rest of it and have Sergeant Gorse drop it off at the AQM stores. Yes, sir. Captain Quince, Mr. Seibert. Major, sir. Morning, Major Daggett. Something especially interesting out that window? Or is it just spring fever? Well, the quartermaster's report was a little boring this morning. <laughs> I know. It's hard to stay indoors in a day like this. Looks like spring's really here this time. The river's rising, snow melting in the mountains. This warm, we might have a flood like two years ago. The water comes up this high on the bluff? Oh, the fort's safe enough, Lieutenant. Trouble comes there, across the river in the civilian settlement. Maybe this year it'll wash those hay ranches right out. Well, they'd come right back with a new supply of whiskey. Now, if I had my way, they'd be cleaned out for good. I would cut our guardhouse detail by half. Well, you can't blame the men too much, Major, when payday comes around only once a month. Well, I suppose not. Oh, I guess I've got spring fever, too. First birds I've heard in months. Yeah, our snowbirds will be thinking of flying, too. Snowbirds? Winter soldiers. Every year we have a few out here. Men who enlist in the fall just to get a warm spot for the winter. Now they'll be lighting out. They'll desert? Go on west to the gold fields. This happens every year, Mr. Syberts. You can't punish a man before the crime is committed. Afterwards, it's usually too late. They're long gone. Well, couldn't we go after them, bring them back? Well, we could, but we usually found more important things to do. Couldn't we take measures to prevent it? Any suggestions? Well, I don't know exactly, sir, but perhaps warn them at morning parade, read the penalty for desertion, double the guard. And send patrols after the ones that slip through? Well, it just seemed to me... Meanwhile, that... the Cheyenne and the Sioux and the Crow are feeling the spring, too. Riling their blood. I see, sir. You mean there's nothing we can do? Oh, your theory's good enough, Mr. Savage. I'll have the penalty read. And as for the Indians, we'll send out the usual spring patrols to look them over. Well, this weather can't be too soon, Major. I'd say the Clearwater Patrol should be the first. I'd like to take that one. Mr. Seibert's here could handle it. Mr. Seibert's could handle these quartermaster reports too, Major. I'd probably be more useful in the field. On a day like this, I'd like to be in the field, too. That's the price you pay. Why should I relieve you of your responsibility just because you have spring fever? No reason, I guess, Major Daggett. All right. Take the clear water patrol, Captain Quince. <laughs> Thank you, Major. Well, I guess I'd better finish these reports. Sergeant Gorse. Yes, sir. 
Yep. Well, I was about to send for you. Yes, sir. Nice day, isn't it? But... Yes, sir. Spring, I'd say. Wouldn't you? I reckon it is, Captain. Major's a little concerned about spring desertions. Think we have any snowbirds this year? Maybe a few, like always. There, uh, been any talk? Not much lately. Some of them find out they like it. Dress parade, the flag waving, the band playing, you know, Captain. Well, we'll have a few. Yeah, not much we can do except keep our eyes open. No, I guess not. Must be uh, pretty up along the clear water these days, wouldn't you say? Mighty pretty. You uh, might be thinking about a patrol roster, Sergeant. When, sir? Ready to leave before dawn tomorrow? Don't expect your roster to recall. I'll have it for you, Captain. We'll go light, make a fast circle to... What? You there, trooper. Never mind, I'll take care of this. Private? Yes? Oh, yes, sir. Private, a soldier in the United States Cavalry does not sit down on sentry duty. Not even on a lazy spring day. No, sir. Sorry, sir. What's your name? Blant, sir. How long you been in the second? Six months, sir. You should be a soldier by now, Blant. But look at those boots. How long since you polished them? And this, what's this? Uh, a belt, sir. Where's your service belt? I, uh, I lost it, sir. Lost it? You ever hear of canteen inventory? You know that everything you have is government property. Anything you lose is charged to your pay. Yes, sir. Then you'd better be more careful, Private. Get a new service belt today and shine those boots. Yes, sir. Above all, don't sit down on sentry duty. No, sir. Carry on. Yes, everybody's got spring fever, Gorse. Captain, that fella Blant. What about him? He was one of them, did a lot of talking last fall. Oh? That's why he doesn't care about his uniform. Well, maybe he's one we can do something about. Like what, Captain? You can put him on the Clearwater Patrol roster. I ain't too sure he's soldier enough. It'll kill or cure him. And we'll be able to watch him. Yes, sir. Now you might try some of that dress parade on him. Put him on flag detail at retreat tonight. And Gorse, sir. See that he polishes those boots. Dismiss the company. Come on, Dismiss. Private Blant. Yes, sir. You don't carry the flag tucked under your arm. That's the emblem of your country. Sorry, sir. I see Sergeant Gorse has you looking like you might make a soldier, but we'll find that out on patrol. All right, move out, Private. Well, what do you think, Gorse? I don't know, Captain. He's got all the makings except the notion. He's got his mind on other things. I don't know we can depend on him. We might have to. Oh, he might surprise you, Sergeant, if it came to that. Maybe. Well, we'll see. 4 a.m. tomorrow, Sergeant. Hey, it's 
That is. All present are accounted for, Sergeant? All except one, sir. Blant. He's gone. Must have left last night. Took his horse, equipment. Real snowbird after all. You were right, Sergeant. We can't have gone very far, sir. Maybe if we go through the hay ranches across the river. All right. Stand a horse. Lead out. Prepare to mount. Mount. Forward. By twos. At the walk. Ho. Not much doing around here this early. Well, they're not on army time. No, sir. Whiskey time. I don't see any sign. There. In that corral. Yes, sir. By golly, that's an army mouth back of old Greasy's. I figured Greasy'd be the most likely to take a chance. He didn't have time to get rid of it yet. Patrol! Oh! Doris, come on along. Yes, sir. Jenkins, get that horse and put him with the pack mules. Yes. Hey! Hey, what's going on here? What do you think you're doing? Where'd you get that horse in your corral, Greasy? What horse? You know what horse. Where's the man who brought it? I don't know what you're talking about. Back room, Gorse. Yes, sir. Now, wait a minute. Get out of the way, Greasy. You're in enough trouble. Now, wait a minute, Captain. Let me explain. Yes, Captain. Uniform, saddle, pack, hardware, everything. You didn't expect us so soon, did you, Greasy? Where's the soldier you got this from? Well? He left last night. Went on west to catch up with a wagon train. Went through yesterday. All right. Of course, we'll take the uniform, saddle, and horse. Leave the rest. Now, look here. I paid $150 and an old mule for them. You didn't know it was stolen government property. You didn't figure to make at least another hundred profit from it. Oh, I'm bleeding for you, Greasy. Next time, stay out of trouble and collect the reward for deserters. Some reward, $20. Then take the consequences. Come on, Gorse. Captain... He can't be far down the trail. Our orders are to go on to the Clearwater, Sergeant. That's more important. But we just might circle back to the trail farther up. Who knows? We might find that wagon train. Right, Captain. What about, Sergeant? Sure is pretty up here. Was till now. Look up ahead. Yeah. Patrol! Halt! Well, Gorse, what do you make of it? This engine's all right. I don't know what tribe. There was a lot of them, maybe 30, 40... Went south, maybe a day. Yeah. And it was no hunting party. No. No, it's a raiding party for sure. We're not too far from the Oregon Trail now. There'll be wagon trains coming through even this early. We know of at least one. We'll follow their trail. Make sure. Yes, sir, but we're awful short-handed for that big a party. Well, we can warn the trains at least. Who's got the strongest horse? Jenkins, I think. All right. Jenkins? Yes, sir? 
You get back to Laramie as fast as you can. Report to Major Daggett we found a big party. Ask him to send B Company out along the Oregon Trail to meet us. Yes, sir. Right now, sir? Move out. All right, Gorse, let's go. At the trot! Ho! Should be getting close to the Oregon Trail, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Any time now. Maybe we better. Wait a minute. Guns, Captain. At the gallop. Hold. It's a wagon train, Captain. They're under attack. Surrounded. Them Cheyenne, at least 50. Sure don't stand much chance against that many, Captain. No, but if we surprise them, we might be able to ride through to the wagons. Hold your fire, men. Stay low in the saddle, and we'll ride straight through. All right. Charge! glad to see you. I'm Ben Gale, leader of the train. I don't know how much good we can do you, sir, but looks like we surprised him for the moment. We pulled off to talk it over. Get your people back of the wagons. They'll be coming in again. All right. Boys, now get back to your places. The horses are all secure, Captain. Wait a minute, Gorse. Blant. Oh? Hello, Captain. I guess you were hoping not to see us. Yeah, I guess I was. We are. You're under arrest. Disarm him, Gorse. Now, wait, Captain. I want a gun. We're going to need everyone here. You didn't want to fight with us, Mr. Blant. Now you're not going to. You'll stay back with the women and children. But, Captain, here listen. They come we again. Need... All right, hold your fire. Let him get close. Three charges. How many more can we stand off, Captain? Oh, they won't come in again tonight. Getting too dark. Looks like they're making camp, tending their wounded. We can expect them again at dawn, though. They're not leaving. Not much we can do, is there? Not much. Can't expect B Company till sometime tomorrow. We can hold out till then. Keep a good watch, Gorse. Yes, sir. How's Corporal James? He'll be all right. He's asleep now. Oh. It's you, Bland. Bandaged his arm. Thought I might as well be useful. Very good. This one's all right, but uh, Chambers over there is dead. I see. Captain... I want a gun. You do, Blant? You're outnumbered three to one. You got four men wounded, one dead. I want to take his place. You didn't want to fight with the cavalry. I was never afraid of a fight. I, I just had other plans. I admit it wasn't right, but 
What does it matter now? We may none of us get back. Matters to me. Matters to my men. The men you rode with. Captain, I'd made up my mind. Planned it all for so long, I... I had to go through with it. Stubbornness is a poor excuse, Mr. Plant. Won't you even let me try to make up for it? Plant, you're going to stand trial for desertion. I don't mean that. I mean to the men. We'll see, Blant. In the morning. Captain? What? Why wait till morning? I got an idea how we can get out of this. It's going to be dark tonight. If somebody could sneak out to those Indian horses, cut the picket rope, stampede them... You and think then... anybody could get within 100 yards of those horses and live? But if they could, then if we were ready to move fast, they couldn't follow us. We could make it back to Bridger's Crossing by morning, maybe. And what man am I supposed to send out there, Mr. Blant? Me. No. It's a crazy idea. So crazy, I think you were betting I wouldn't accept it. I guess I got that coming. You have to admit, even if it was true, I was betting my life. We'll risk it right here, Mr. Blant. You go on tending the wounded. About the gun? Well, we'll see you in the morning. Gail, why don't you turn in? We'll keep the watch. I'm leader of this wagon train, Captain. I'll stay. All right. It's kind of mesmerizing, though. Staring at them little fires, winking in the dark. Captain, think we got a chance? Well, if our ammunition holds out, the relief should be here before too many hours. I hope so. I sure do hope so. Captain? Yes, Sergeant? Uh, have you seen Blant, sir? No. He's gone. Escaped again, I guess. I wouldn't be too sure of that, Sergeant. What do you mean, sir? Mr. Gale, if I give the word, how quick can you hitch all your mules to two wagons, put the women and children in one, wounded in the other? Uh, what do you mean, Captain? I mean, we may be getting out of here. Well, Captain, something's going on over there. I know, Sergeant. Get those mules hitched, Mr. Gale. All right, Captain. Captain, I don't understand. You will in a minute, Gorse. Here he comes. Now hold your fire. Hold your fire! Captain, it's Blant. Yeah, it's Blant. It worked, Captain. It worked, stampeding them right through the camp. There's quite a ruckus over there. I can hear it, Mr. Blant. We're getting ready to move. <laughs> You're not very good at obeying orders, are you? What about that gun now, sir? And a horse? We might have to fight yet. You're still under arrest, and it's dark night. If you had a horse and a gun, we might not ever see you again. That's right, sir. You might not. Sergeant Gorse. Sir. You'll furnish Mr. Blant with a horse and carbine. He'll ride the rear guard. Yes, sir. Thank you, Captain. Too bad about you, Blanche. You might have made a fair soldier if you weren't so stubborn. All right, let's get moving. Getting light, sir. You can see pretty good now. What do you see, Sergeant? Well, no engines anyway, and that's the main thing. Look up ahead, Sergeant. Way out, past the crossing. Well, that's a column, Captain. That's Company B. That's right, Sergeant. I think we can pull up now. Patrol! Hope! What are we stopping for, Captain? There's our relief up ahead, Mr. Gale. They'll be here in a few minutes. We're safe now. Patrol, dismount and pin graze. <laughs> Wood and water details, Sergeant Gorse. Everybody will be hungry. As soon as... Oh. Hello, Blant. Morning, Captain. 
You lost your chance, Mr. Bland. Well, sir, a man can be stubborn just so long. True. If it's any satisfaction to you, I'm sorry now about the whole thing. You mean you find you like the cavalry? Yes, sir, I do. Sergeant Gorks? Yes, sir? You still have that uniform we picked up at Old Greasy's? Back with the pack mules. You better get into it, Blant, before B Company arrives. But can't... You have some objection, Private? No, sir. But... I don't think anybody in this patrol will object. Will they, Sergeant Gorse? I sure don't think so. Captain? Thank you, sir. I'm going to cite you in my report. I understand, sir. For heroism and action against the enemy. Well, Captain... But don't think you're going to get off scot-free, Private. There's always canteen inventory, and you've got a bad habit of losing government property. We recovered your horse and saddle and uniform, but the rest of it, it's going to cost you a couple of months' pay. Yes, sir. I don't mind, sir. All right, move out, Private. Yes, sir. Well? What are you grinning at, Gorse? Why, nothing, sir. I don't think the Major would approve, Sergeant, but you and I know how hard it is to find a good soldier. Yes, sir. Now... What about those wood and water details, Sergeant? I'm hungry. Yes, sir, Captain Quince. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by John Dunkel, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Jack Moyles and Harry Bartell, with Paul Duboff, Howard Culver, James Nusser, and Joseph Cranston. Company, attention! Dismiss. Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Most accidents aren't really accidental at all. Only you can cause an accident. That's right, it's up to you to read and heed the safety signs. To keep your eyes on the road, to watch out for those curves ahead and the cars driving along near you. Most drivers know how to operate a car. They know the traffic rules. They know that speeding, taking chances, failing to keep to the right of the line are dangerous hazards. Accidents happen because drivers do these things despite what they know. So while you're driving, Remember that you and only you are responsible for your life and the lives of those driving with you. Drive carefully. <laughs>